what's up hello today's review is of a non-fiction book it is a memoir it's by Suki Kim and it is called without you there is no us my time with the sons of North Korea's elite I picked up this book from the city library and I picked it up because I am in a library book club that meets every month uh, and we were talking about this book in June so one of the criteria for selection for the books that we read for book club uh, is that the library has to have a lot of copies so that you know as many people as possible can read the book obviously and participate and so when I heard that I sort of thought to myself you know what what kind of book makes a library purchase X many copies and so I was sort of on the fence about whether or not I was going to enjoy this and uh, the announcement that we were going to be reading this book for the month of June came out right around the time that there was and probably still is uh, tension about the United States meeting with North Korea uh, to discuss some some diplomatic issues and so I thought that, that was really well chosen uh, but also didn't know whether or not a book that a bunch of copies were bought for the library for was going to be because it just seemed popular and was hyped and there would have been a lot of demand at the time or because there was a lot of demand based on the actual content and success and and goodness of the book. So Suki Kim, who is the author, takes a job in North Korea's capital to teach at the one university that they have allowed to stay open in 2011. Uh, the rest of the universities in the country have been shut and everyone who is in them is sent to work in construction camps. And this one is open uh, sort of for Christian evangelicals to come over and teach English to these students uh, sort of under the guise of spreading the word of the Lord. And so she is a journalist and she winds up taking this job sort of pretending to be as incredibly devout uh, in terms of her Christianity as the rest of the folks that are there teaching alongside her, uh, even though she is not. And so she spends two semesters teaching the, the sons, this is an all male school, so she's teaching the sons of some of North Korea's most elite distinguished families. And it opens up a lot of insight that I don't think could be as easily gotten by any other journalist uh, in during that time, mostly because she talks about how visitors and tourists to the country, those who are let in, are shown very specific things that the country wants them to see, and then they are, you know, shepherded back. They're always on watch by minders uh, who are checking to make sure that they're not straying out of bounds and looking or, or writing about or saying anything that they shouldn't. So she gets this really sort of insider look because she has a little more freedom as a teacher um, of a lot of the things that she presents as teaching material or that she says to her students or activities that she introduces uh, can sort of be disguised as you know, teaching tools. The students will need to know this if they want to work internationally. They'll have to know about these different customs, uh, things as simple as, as eating with a knife and fork. Um, one of the, the teachers at the school tries to, to get the students to understand that custom and, and they very much don't like it, but the only reason that that is approved is because they feel that that is something that internationally these students who are the most elite in all of the country uh, will need to know how to do. So she introduces a lot of topics and over time becomes very, very frustrated as one might with the, the isolationist nature of North Korea and of the school and of the mindset. She realizes that she's working with students who are incredibly bright, they're in the top percentages in the country, their families are either wealthy or renowned or have such long histories in the nation, and these students are the ones that have been allowed to study at university and not sent off to do manual labor because they show at least some aptitude or the, the government feels that these are the students who are going to lead them into the future in science and technology. That decision is made by North Korea and as Suki Kim discovers, they're actually very far behind the Western world when it comes to knowledge about science and technology, simply because it is a closed nation and it really restricts access to information to all of its citizens. And that's something that she finds very, very difficult to deal with coming in as a Western outsider and realizing that everything that she says and thinks 
and and talks about has to be censored she realizes that she's she's working with a group of students that has been taught never to question but simply to follow and something as simple as writing an essay is very challenging for them because they don't have the experience in trying to argue a point and to justify it by looking at other perspectives and proving their own perspective in a five paragraph essay and something that comes as simple as that to a lot of western cultures is very foreign for them because they've never been taught to prove anything or at least that's that's the the premise that she presents with this on the whole, I found this book to be a really interesting exposition and portrait of truth and questioning the idea of westernized truth uh, and what a society really needs in order to survive and to thrive because clearly this is an example of something that is, is very foreign to me, not only in, in culture and language, but the way that their society has been designed over time. And just sort of looking at that question of what each of our truths is and how we move forward with understanding them uh, cross-culturally. On the whole, I think this was an excellent novel. It's very, very well written. She does an excellent job of recounting all of her experiences and must have done an incredible amount of documentation in order to make this book into a reality and the, the picture of North Korea that it has become. Uh, I definitely give it five out of five stars, uh, which is a, quite a high rating for a, a piece of nonfiction, I think, but I think it's definitely deserve it. If you have read this book uh, or Suki Kim's other book, which is a novel, it's called The Interpreter, uh, please do let me know down in the comments. I would love to have a chat about it. Hope you're all having lovely weeks and lovely lives. Anything you'd like to know about us is in the description, and we'll see you very soon.